Welcome to Revealing Jesus. Are you hungry to learn more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? I am your host, Christina Pereira, lover of Jesus, apostolic leader, licensed and ordained minister, author, podcaster, and kingdom party planner. Did you know that the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus? And that simply means the more we learn about our beautiful Savior, the more we will experience all He died to give us. Join me for all things the King and His Kingdom, including revelatory teaching, interviews with Bible ministers, media leaders, authors, and more. Come discover the beauty of God displayed all across the body of Christ. Together, we are revealing more of Jesus to a hurting world today. Hey, everybody, and thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I am your host, Christina, and I'm so excited to have you with me here today. I hope and I pray that you are doing well right where you are and enjoying the continuously flowing favor of grace pouring from our beautiful Savior and Father in heaven. I've got a great show for you today. I have an amazing leader in the body of Christ with me back here on the podcast. Uh, We met a couple of months ago uh, when he released his book uh, called Grace Ambassador, and he just, we just had a wonderful connection in the spirit. He is the president of Jessup University. Please help me welcome back Dr. John Jackson. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Christina. And I just love you. I I love Mm. your show. I love the phrase revealing Jesus. Isn't that what we all want to be about as his sons and daughters? What a beautiful, beautiful thing. So what a great thing to be with you and to be with your extended family. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, when the Lord told me to do this, you know, he said, go call it revealing Jesus, do teaching testimonies and interviews. And so I was like, oh, that's such a brilliant title. But then I was really thinking about, you know, my story and how I got here. And I was like, oh, man, that's why you picked that. Wow. He's so brilliant. Even when we don't know what we're doing, he knows what we're doing, right? And and, and it is true. And I love the way you're even saying that. Like, we have a story. We have a life experience. Yeah. And, and he's guiding us. And sometimes we don't know exactly the why. Like, why why is he telling me to do this? Why is he telling me to go there? Say yes to this. Say no to that. But ultimately, that's revealed. And if you're anything like me, sometimes I have to look back and go, oh, that's what that was about. In the moment, I don't really understand it all. But uh, that's just his faithfulness. He's such a good, good father. He would, you know, like the scripture says, who of you, if your child asked for a piece of bread, would give him a stone? You know, he's Mm -hmm. a good father. He gives us good things, uh, even in the challenges of life. Yeah, it's so good. You know, it's amazing. So this season in my life over the last year has really been a look back and it's been like a 2020 vision. You know, it was like, oh, you were doing this here. Oh, this happened because of this. And it's so interesting. You know, I was really praying and thinking about what we would talk about today. And I feel like we're coming into this point in the body of Christ where Things are shifting and we are now stepping into the new and the new ways that we're doing things can't be done like we we did them in the past. Let's talk about that. I feel like that's where we're going today. Well, thank you. Wow. I didn't know in advance. I'm glad you didn't warn me in advance because I might have prepared a, a lot. Um, Christina, you, you may not know this, that I have always been kind of a history buff and mm. I'm, I'm not an expert. I get dates wrong. So please forgive me in advance if I misstate a date. But I study a lot of history and especially early church history. So let me Mm. give you just one thing. As soon as you said that, I thought, wow, the early church first, uh, let's call it 300 years, suffered massive persecution. Yeah. Then the church experienced what could be called great favor under Constantine. And after 350 or 400 AD, they had really great favor. What's interesting, Christina, is that it was when the church experienced great persecution that it flourished and grew and expanded and new ways of doing things, house churches and, and missionary expansion. It's when the church was in favor, quote, I say that in quote, and, and it kind of got that in some ways, most people look back and say, ah, that was actually a time of drift. Yeah. So here in the United States, I couldn't agree with you more. 
what worked in the 1970s and 80s and 2000s, we're in a new season. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, I, I really feel like this new generation and, and there's no mistake that, you know, he sent me out here um, out into media ministry where most of Gen Z millennials and even some of Gen X just simply isn't even stepping foot in churches anymore. And, you know, as a, as a millennial, I understand their frustration. You know, I grew up in the church. I grew up in the Baptist church and um, I really came to a place in my life where uh, it was either live a real faith or die. Um, and I don't know if I've shared all of my healing story with you, but um, sometimes I share bits and pieces as the Holy Spirit leads. But I really came to a place where, you know, it was either God is real and he's going to show up and he's going to heal me and save me and keep me alive or I am going to just perish. And then. Fortunately, so much of my generation has seen a religion and not a relationship with a real living and loving Jesus that they are, they are not stepping foot into that. They're not interested in programs. They're not interested in smoke and lights and mirrors. But do you have the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit? Have you been with Jesus? That's Amen. What it is. Oh, Christina, I'm having church right now. This is so This is so good. Um, Many, many years ago, we started a church uh, up in the Carson City area of Nevada, and we didn't think about this in advance, but we said this, we're, we're, we're starting a church for people uh, who don't like church, but who want to know about Jesus. Yeah. And as the years went by, we were shocked at how many people were what I would call de-churched. They had an experience with church, religion, yeah. but they left religion but they were still, their heart's longing was, is there a God? Is yeah. he real? Does he know about me? Does he care about me? Does he have anything to say about my life? And they did want to learn the Bible, but they wanted to learn the Bible in a way that would uh, make sense in their everyday. They wanted to learn about the Bible in a way that they could have clarity. So what I would say to you is this. Let me start with the church. I love the church. I, I, I tell people all the time, I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love family and I love yeah. the church. Yeah. But now the church has many different forms. So let mm -hmm. me talk about the church. One of my burdens for today's generation, Gen Z, um, Gen X, millennials, is, is this issue. Are we really making faithful followers of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Are we taking babies or helping to make babies in Jesus, grow them up to be sons and daughters, and then growing them up to be fathers and mothers who are reproducing in the faith. I'm, I'm talking about in the faith. Yeah. And I think you're right, Christina. So many of our churches, and, and I led those churches, and I grew up Baptist, so I know what being involved in church, you know, three diets a week and all that is. But so many times you can do that, and your heart's a million miles away from the Father. Mm -hmm. You don't really have a relationship. You have a religious structure in your life. And COVID, mm -hmm. by the way, COVID was a great revealer but it was also yes. a great accelerator. It accelerated yes. the recognition of many people. I don't want to go to church. I can just maybe periodically podcast or watch something on streaming video and that, call it good. And I think it's a crisis, but I actually think it's a John 15 moment where Jesus is pruning and saying, what's real? What's real relationship look like? Not smoke and mirrors. And again, I'm, I'm not anti-large church, That's right, but I, I am saying, what's real? What what mm -hmm. what? Relationship with Jesus. What is it to reveal Jesus, not mm -hmm. to produce a church? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's 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 so important. I think that we're listening to this generation because I think each generation carries keys of revealing something of God. So each good. generation is hungry for something of God, and each generation pursues God in its own unique way. And so we can learn something both from each side of the equation, both from the older generations and both from the younger generations. And, and, and that's the way God's, God's family works. You know, see, God doesn't just discount somebody just because they're young. There's so many times in the Bible where people come in and God says, but I know you're young. I know you're the least in your house. I know you're 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 a woman. I know you're this. I know you're that. But God says this is who you are. This is who you're created to be in me. And I think we have to realize that that God in his sovereignty has the right to create and make as he sees fit. 
And so when we're coming in and we're um, engaging with all of these different generations and all these different backgrounds and things, we need to honor what God has made. Uh, Christina, I just feel like you deposited gold. That I, I hope your listeners will maybe, I don't know if there's a way to rewind, but can just listen to that. God has made a deposit. He's put keys in every generation. We need to honor and respect. So somebody like me, who's a, sorry, baby boomer, I need to look at Gen Z. I need to look at uh, millennials. I need to look at Gen X. Uh, and I need to say, what can I learn? What can I receive? What does the father have for me from my brothers and sisters who are at a different age and stage of journey, just like I need to keep looking at my elders. I, I'm 63. Mm -hmm. I have elders who are in their 70s and 80s and beyond. I need to still be able to receive from them what the Lord has entrusted to them. I was, I was looking at Acts 22 this morning because I'm going to be teaching this weekend, and they asked me to go through that passage. And the Apostle Paul retells his testimony. Mm. He has all kinds of experience. He, you know, he's Pharisee of Pharisees and all that. He has an encounter with Jesus. Then he ends up uh, developing his testimony, and then he faces opposition, mm -hmm. and he remains faithful. So that's real quickly my five points in that chapter of how the chapter plays out. So what I'm thinking of is this. Somebody's listening to your podcast, and, and they feel like I'm the least of my family. I'm the least of, just as you said. But I also want to talk to other people. There's somebody listening to this right now, Christina, who's at the top of their game. They got a great business mm -hmm. they're running. They've got a, they're the CEO of something. They're, they're uh, making great strides, got favors happening on them. Can I just tell you this? That favor, that expansion, that growth is not an accident. It's a stewardship. Mm -hmm. God is putting into your hands, whatever he's put into your hands, little or much, one talent, two talents, five talents, using that parable, whatever he's put in your hands, you're accountable for what he's put in your hands. And some of you have great opportunity that you wonder why that's there. It's because the Father has opened those doors for you. So mm, good. That's so good. You know, I you know, I get kind of frustrated when I start seeing ads on uh, Facebook for church growth. Mm. And for me, the number one thing of church growth and expansion, I think you hit on it. I think is um, persecution was key to that. And so right now, I believe that we are going to be seeing even more expansion because of the persecution. And, you know, what does God say? Be faithful, patient in affliction, faithful in persecution. You know, these are these things and that you were just talking about. What are we being faithful in? What do we have? And the truth is, and Jesus spoke this to me many, many years ago. He said, you cannot receive from what you do not honor. And so uh, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a melding of generations happening there. There's a restoration of honor that's happening right now. And then there's a there's a coming together in unity right now because what's coming on the church is greater and greater persecution. But if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, just like you said, God can use this to drive our tent pegs further and further and further so that we can, just like the word in Isaiah says, make room for more spiritual children. I was reading in that verse the other day in the Amplified, and it said, actually, to make your tent larger is to bring room for more spiritual children. Wow, such a good word again. I just, I'm resonating with all kinds of things. Uh, I, I know uh, people in the audience have probably had this experience. You go into a really dark room and you can't find the light switch. So if you have your iPhone or your Android with you, you turn the, the flashlight on. And you know, as soon as you do that, the darkness of the room, you can't conquer that light that you've got. At least you can see in that space. The darker the darkness gets, the brighter the light of Christ shines. And, you know, that Matthew 5 passage says, what, what good is a light if you put it under a bushel? What good is salt if it's lost its saltiness? Mm -hmm. So, Christina, I resonate with you. I don't want persecution. I want an easy yeah. life. I, I want like, hey, everything's good every day. It's up and to the right. That, that's what I want. But if and when persecution comes, actually the body of Christ is, is going to be refined it's, it's going to be rejuvenated and restored. And I think we're going to see multiplication. We're going to see more disciples. Just like you said, expanding your tent is making room for more uh, sons and daughters, more uh, fathers and mothers, more babies. And, and think about this, Christina. You, you know this. We've talked enough. 
you know, discipleship doesn't happen in mass. We don't make mm -hmm. disciples, you know, a thousand at a time. We make them in relationships with small, yes. meaningful encounters. Well, that's going to take a lot of people like you and me saying, mm -hmm. I'm willing to pour my life into these two or three people. I'm willing to have my small group. I'm willing to, and I think this is a little controversial. I think church is about ready to break out. I don't think mm -hmm. it's going to be, I think, I, I'm not saying big churches will go away. I think there's going to be great big churches, but I won't be shocked if the next season with persecution is churches meeting in homes, churches meeting in, sorry, churches meeting in bars, churching meeting in restaurants, in workplaces. I think that ecclesia, that's the, the mm -hmm. biblical word for gathering, the ecclesia is going to look like the first century where sometimes they had to meet in secret. You know, think about COVID, crazy, crazy, crazy. But COVID actually revealed, you know what? We can actually do church in a small group in our neighborhood. We yes. can actually meet at, at work in these settings. So I don't know. I'm 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 expecting. I'm leaning forward saying, Lord, what are you going to do with your people? Amen. Amen. I I think it's amazing and I I love that when the Holy Spirit shows up, he starts uh, stirring things up within each person and we're seeing that happen right here. And I always see that on revealing Jesus. But that's the way the early church worked. They came and they came together and the Holy Spirit was moving so much and it was encouraging so many believers. They were flowing in the gifts of the Spirit so much so that the Apostle Paul had to come in and say, hey, let's do this in an orderly fashion. Let's not shut down the gifts, but let's do this in an orderly fashion where we're, we're taking turns and we're waiting and you know, if, if one has a word of knowledge, let him stand up. If one has a word of prophecy, let him stand up. You know, the way that we've done church in the past where we've come through this Calvinistic style of preaching and teaching where we come and we do worship and then we do an offering and then we sit and somebody gives the message. You know, there's nothing wrong with giving messages and we have anointed preachers and teachers who are designed to give messages. But God has so equipped the body of Christ that we can no longer afford for each and every one of us to sit on the sidelines and keep our whole mouths shut when the Spirit of God himself says that they will all be taught by Jesus. Come on, girl. Ooh. Come on. Come on. So I, 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 you got you have to let me say this. So Ephesians 4, fivefold yeah. ministry. Why do they exist? You know, yeah. apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors. Why do they exist? To equip people for the work yes. of ministry. That fivefold ministry does not exist for the platform. Yes. It exists for equipping. Now, let me say this. This will panic some people. I know a lot of people are nervous about signs and wonders, nervous about the first Corinthians passage and being disorderly and God's got to order and, and, and of peace, not of chaos. Yep, yep, yep. I'm with you. Let me ask you this. What if signs and wonders happen in groups of 10 to 12? Mm. Or I'm praying over somebody who I just met or who is in my neighborhood even that I know pretty well, but I'm praying for them to be healed. What if healings happen like that? Not in big stadium events. I'm not opposed. Not in big church gatherings. I'm not opposed. But what if signs and wonders happen with everyday believers doing everyday works of Jesus in everyday settings? Amen. That's Amen. Not to get Amen. back to that. When I wrote the book, Grace Ambassador, my whole goal was everyday discipleship, a second second reformation happening where it's not just grace received, which which again, I honor and grateful for, for what happened in the 1500s yeah. as we clarified that, but I'm passionate about grace distributed. What is it like? So, so I've been praying for servers in restaurants. I think we talked about this before. I've been praying for servers in restaurants and have seen people weep. I've seen people come to the Lord. We've prayed for physical healing. It can happen in your everyday as you walk around with the spirit of Jesus inside of you. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I'm so with you. I'm so glad you said you don't discount any way that God wants to move. If he wants to move in stadiums, so be it. If he wants to move next door, so be it. If he wants to move on a podcast, so be it. You know, Amen. I'm the I'm, I'm one of the ones who says, OK, Lord. Um, however you want, here yeah. I am, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say. And, you know, if, if, if we're operating in like that, you see, grace is always designed to bring us um, into relationship, into the grace of God, into the mercy of God, into the free flowing favor of God, into the anointing of God, into the gifts of God. But yes. from there, we take what God has given us and we freely give and see so many 
in the church, in the local church, they've shut down. They've shut down things. Uh, they've shut down the grace, the charisma, the free flowing grace of God, of the spirit, out of fear, out of religion, out of control. And people have walked away in desperation and hunger. And so if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we would know that, that, that God is not only wanting to reach people through these things, but he's wanting to love people. He's wanting to bring people into, into wholeness, into fruitfulness. And so without the grace, without the gifts, without the fivefold, um, we are missing opportunities to minister to people, to, to speak directly into people's lives. You know, I've been in situations where people are so hungry in this testimony. I love what you were talking about about um, sharing it outside the four walls of the church because I am a huge believer in that. And so one day I was actually getting my, my husband's oil changed in his car. And what I was a in good the life. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't realize how blessed he is, but right, exactly. I pray every day. <laughs> Most men do not. Most husbands do not, by the way. I, I always say, by the way, and I'm starting a national trend. It's catching on. I always enter my, introduce my wife as my better two thirds. So I'm starting mm. a trend now so that men, men, you catch this and eventually give John Jackson credit because you'll get husband points for this. If you will introduce your wife as your better two thirds instead of your better half, your better yeah. two thirds, people will get that. Oh, he recognizes she's a blessing. She's a gift. So, yes. so anyway, go ahead. You're, you're getting your husband's oil changed. Yes. So I was getting my husband's oil changed and I was in the Jiffy Lube and because I am who I am, right? <laughs> yep. Um, you know, I felt like the Lord was asking me to pray for this man mm. who was experiencing knee pain yes. in the Jiffy Lube. And so I went over to him uh, I, against all fear and against all judgment and, and everything. I went over to him and I said, I feel like the Lord is asking me to pray for your knee for healing. Are you experiencing knee pain? He says, I am. I said, OK, would you like me to pray for healing? And he goes, mm, no, thanks. And I kid you not. The TV in this Jiffy Lube just happened to be turned to a Christian broadcasting station. And I don't remember if it was TBN or CBN. I think it might have been CBN. But the host of that TV program in that moment looked at the audience and said, God is healing someone's knee right now. That man turned and looked at me and he says, come pray for my knee right now. <laughs> And oh, when I did, the Holy Spirit erupted in that Jiffy Lube. Not only did I end up praying for that man's knee, but I ended up prophesying to two people in the waiting room. And then so I sit down, wait for my car. This man from the back, the shop manager, comes and he calls my name. And I'm thinking he's going to tell me something about my car, you know, like it's ready. You need new air filter, whatever. You know how they try to upsell you. Yeah. He goes, whatever you did for them, do it for me now. And so I ended up prophesying to him. And so if we understand how the gifts and the anointing and the fivefold works, people are so hungry. And the I don't know whether these were unchurched people, but they had never encountered the power of God. They had never encountered prophetic words. They had never encountered healing before. But but when people see it, they're yes. hungry. Yes. And can you let me go? Uh, let me go after something that's just it'll seem like an adjunct to this, but it it's so spot on. I just have a burden for this. Christina, the prophetic words you're talking, wor words of exhortation, words of encouragement. Yes, prophetic words can be revelation, but I've learned so much from my wife and some people around me that, that are deep in, in the prophetic that you always think, oh, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen three weeks from now on Tuesday. And 99% and of the time, prophetic words are words of exhortation or, or encouragement. But I want to say one other thing. You were in a jiffy loop. Now, let me say, somebody's listening to, to, to you today, somebody's listening right now who works in the tech industry and is struggling with how do I use AI, artificial intelligence? What about machine learning? What about virtual reality? What about augmented reality and all these technologies that I barely understand? I'm telling you right now, the Lord has placed you specifically, sir or, or ma'am, he's placed you specifically in that industry to use that tool for his glory somebody listening to this broadcast is an entrepreneur. 
they're, they're a business person and God's given them favor and their business is expanding and all that. That is a tool to be used for his glory in the everyday. If you're in arts, media, entertainment, like you, what got me thinking about this was you talked about media. The Lord told you what to name this podcast. He told you what what to uh, begin to share with testimony. That's his assignment to use modern media. This didn't exist 20 years ago, 30 years, to use modern media for his glory. Amen. You can reach thousands and tens and thousands of people that you would never reach before. So I, I just, I don't want us as believers to live in fear. I want us to live in faith in the everyday. And is it scary to pray for somebody? Uh, first of all, a man. Second of all, in a jiffy lube. And third of all, about something very specific, his knee. Yes, yes, yes. Scared to death. On the other hand, Jesus in that particular setting, so blessed and affirmed that he had a yeah. television studio announce it online. The guy's initial re resistance fades, comes, and then you get to pray for multiple other people, including the, the shop manager. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he's so faithful. And so I, you know, I don't even look at the, the, the fear to overcome, you know, and I always tell people this, it's just like getting past the waves. You ever go out in the ocean and the first wave is not so bad. Then the second wave comes and then the third wave could really knock you down. Right. But yes. once you get past the place where the waves break, it's just smooth, isn't it? So good. That's such a great analogy. I just had the amazing privilege to be in Hawaii. Uh, hadn't been there for 16 years to this this spot. And so I got the chance to be there. And, and you're right. It's the, it's the first, second wave. Once you get past, though, the first, second, third wave, now you're out where it's, it's more calm. Mm -hmm. You're past the break point. Yes. And that's where a lot of us are. We're at the break point of life. We're like, I can't yeah. do this. But once we get past that, we, we get to be in that place of calm and peace. Wow. Amen. So good. Well, this has been so much fun. Will you pray for our listeners before we go today? Oh, I will. I will. Lord Jesus, I come before you right now. Sisters, brothers, uh, older men, older women, younger men, younger women, whoever is listening to this broadcast, whoever is uh uh, whatever generation they represent, whatever their socioeconomics, if it male, female, J Jesus, I just come before you on behalf of each listener. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would so infuse them right now with clarity, that clarity that you love them deeply, that you have demonstrated your love so richly in Jesus dying on the cross for them. And I thank you that Jesus did not stay in the tomb, but he was raised from the dead and that he was able to distribute the power of the Holy Spirit. So now, Lord Jesus, I come before you and I pray, as Romans 15, 13 says, that people would be full of joy and peace as they trust in you because you are the God of hope who wants them to overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, on this Revealing Jesus podcast, I pray, Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ would have been revealed today and that we would say no to religious symbols and rituals and, and institutions that are empty of meaning and we would say yes to a vital, life-giving, transforming relationship with you, Jesus. And that when the enemy comes, and he will, when the enemy comes and he tries to steal, kill, and destroy, we will say, no, we are sons and daughters of the Most High. We are pressing into Jesus. He is our peace. He is our covering. He is our life. He is our hope. And Lord, I want to close this by praying for Christina. I pray, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, that you would continue to give her boldness and courage and faith and perseverance so that she could end up fulfilling your assignment in her life. And, and that's mm -hmm. for all of us, Lord, that we will fulfill. I, I love how David, when David died, he had fulfilled the purpose of God in his generation. Lord, may that be so for Christina, for me, and for every one of us. May we fulfill your purposes in this generation. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for your prayer. And thank you so much for being here with me today. I just love your heart. Thank you. I love yours as well. You minister to me every time we're together. Oh, fine. Yay. <laughs> you too. <laughs>
Well, I hope and I pray today's episode has blessed you. I will have links from today's broadcast in the show notes under Revealing Jesus with Christina Prayer, wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, I will have links for you to connect with Dr. John Jackson, of course, our special guest. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. I sincerely hope and pray today's episode has blessed you. Now it's your turn to continue the conversation. We are all evangelists of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like this episode, rate it, share it with a friend. If it's impacted your life, let them know that you want it to do the same in theirs. Help spread the word of the good news of Jesus. Subscribe to the mailing list and get episodes, articles, downloads, and more sent right to you. Link in show notes or just text JESUS to one 815 7778 Again, that's JESUS, one 815 7778 We would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us at Christina Prayer Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.